Hey, good evening, pa- <laughs> good evening, Pastor Mike. Hey, good evening, everybody. It's Pastor Mike. That's me. That's who. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to welcome you again to another edition of Amplify, where we're turning up the heat every Thursday night. With practical teaching for everyday living, man. Hear it, see it, and then let's live it together. Amen. And so in just a few moments, uh, we're going to continue in our biblical uh, guidance series or on, on prayer. And, um, but before we do, let's just open with a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity to just come before you tonight and to look into your holy word. For we know that the word of God is alive, it's active, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. We thank you tonight, Father, for the Holy Spirit, who's our comforter, our guide, our standby. He's our teacher as well. And so, Holy Spirit, we just look to you to help us tonight to teach the Word of God in boldness, in truth, in power. And Father, that there be not only ears to hear and eyes to see, but hearts that are receptive to receive. Now, we'll just not be hearers only, but we'll act upon the Word of God as it's sown into our heart tonight, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Again, welcome again to Amplify, turning up the heat every Thursday night. And so, um, in our last session, we we, we were talking about how important it is to use the sword or the word of God against the devil. How important that word is for its power, its truth. The Bible says it's life and health and healing to all of our flesh. And so, we kind of left off in, we kind of wrapped that up, but we're going to stay in the same vein and we're going to look at our next point, which is that right along with using the Word of God. Now, if you haven't been with us in our last uh, two sessions, you can go to our website at www.hcc.church. There's a drop-down menu that says resources. Click on that. It'll take you to our, our YouTube page. And out there you'll find all of our MP4s and material that we have already have out there. And you can watch last week's or you can watch the whole series and get caught up. And so, but for the sake of time, we're not going to go back and reteach or review in, uh, deeply of what we've already learned. So, um, we talked about how important the Word of God is and how we pray the word. We have to be specific with what we're asking God and how we become specific in our prayer in knowing that we can have what we're asking God is we find, we find what we need in Scripture that says we can have it and then we have the assurance that it's ours. And if we know it's ours, then we can pray with certainty and um, declare His word. And remind God of his promises. Right in context with that, I think the next point that we're going to look at is that we have to fight the good fight of faith. It takes, some, it takes a little time sometimes to build the word into our spirit so that we can stand in faith for answered prayer. And I touched on that just a, I touched on that in our last session, how um, there, there have been times in my life where I prayed and I believed to receive, but I just knew on the inside of me I just wasn't quite there to receive the promise yet. And it took time. But that doesn't mean that I didn't have the promise. It just meant that it took a little time to pull it from the, from the reality or the unrealities of, or the reality of the spiritual realm into the natural realm where it became a reality in my life. And so... Um, as I said, you know, when I was standing for relief or uh, standing against panic attacks, it took uh, almost eight months to walk completely free of the symptoms. I had to build up faith. I remember one time I was driving down. We have a local little, inter- not an interstate, but a highway here. It's called Loop 410 because it just goes around in a circle. It's called Loop 410. And, man, I was driving. It was probably in the late 90s. And we'd, uh, maybe it, was, it had to be late 90s. So we just started the church, man. And man, we had a lot of needs. And I, I was just going down the, 
the, the way, reminding the Lord, because now I'm, I'm pastoring a church. We have needs because I'm pastoring the church. I'm expecting him to, to meet those needs because I'm doing what he's called me to do. And I remember clear as day because it was as though someone was sitting right next to me in the truck. It was so real and the voice was so real. I had to look over to make sure nobody was there. And I was, I was thanking the Lord. I tell him, now I have, the, I have these needs and I thank you're going to take care of them. And he said to me, I'm not moved by your need. I'm moved by your faith. And the moment that he said there, it was like somebody took a, took a pin to an, a helium balloon and I just, just deflated me because I knew what he was saying. I was, I was expecting him to move because of the need, and he doesn't move out of need. He moves through our faith. And so it's important for us then to build our faith. How do we build our faith? The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So that's why it's important for us then to align ourselves with the Word of God in faith. We find what we need in the Word of God. Then we can declare the Word of God because Isaiah says it shall not come back void, but it will accomplish that which it's sent out to do. And we looked at how important it was to sow the Word and how Jesus defeated the enemy through the Word. With it is written in Matthew. Uh, and so it is written. But when we come over into 1 uh, Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12, and that's kind of where I want to pick up tonight. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12. The Bible tells us that we are to fight the good fight. And I think so often what happens here. Is people say, I'm fighting. I'm fighting the fight. I'm fighting the fight. And they get kind of strung out on the word fight. But notice it says the good fight. It's not a bad fight. It's not a fight that means you're going to get beat up in. It's a good fight. That means we win. Fight the good fight for the true faith or our faith. Hold tightly to the eternal life which God has called you to, which you have declared so well before many witnesses. Let me say this to you tonight because I think it's, it's, it's also something that's very important. If, and this is where a lot of times people get hung up because they, they get hung up in the hindrances, but if there weren't any hindrances to our faith, then there wouldn't be a fight. And when it comes to the natural things, I tell you, people will fight tooth and nail for what belongs to them. I mean, I do. I mean, but right over on the other side, when it comes to spiritual things, many times people just play, just roll over and play dead. Isn't that interesting? We'll fight for what's ours naturally, but eh, too much work. For spiritual things and yet spiritual things are not temporal they're eternal and let me give you an example if someone came to your house and claimed that everything in in your home was theirs I'll bet I'll bet you'd put up a fight I'll bet somebody came and said you know what that's my house you're living in you you might be paying the the mortgage or the rent, you might be paying all the bills, but you know what? I claim this house. It's my house and everything in it I want. They don't have any legal right to it, but you just wouldn't say, oh, okay, let me get in my car and leave. You would fight for what's your right. You would fight for what belongs to you. The same is true then... Um, if God's word says something that is yours and he's promised it to you, then you have a right to fight for that promise. You have a right to, st to fight by standing your ground on God's word. 
That's what we, it doesn't mean you're going to duke it out with the devil with your two fists. What it means, we're going to stand upright and we're going to use the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit, to declare what rightfully belongs to us. Just like Jesus said, it is written. It is written. And if God didn't intend for you to have something, he wouldn't have promised it to you. It's just that simple. That's why it's important for us to find out what God's Word says. And when we find out what God's Word says, then we have, a, for a better word, a leg to stand on. But so often what happens in our prayer life is we believe that if God really wants us to have it, then it's just going to come. And you know what? It's just going to be like, uh, you know, uh, uh, just, it's just going to be so easy. It, but it's not going to be easy. you got the devil. The devil wants to rob, according to John 10.10, 10, to steal and to, to kill and to destroy. He wants to take everything from you that pertains into life and godliness. He wants to make you think that God doesn't want you to have any of these things that he's promised. He'll use things like you're not worthy. You sinned yesterday. You didn't do what God asked you to do. You're out of his plan. You're out of his will. It doesn't matter. God loves you. And when we come to God and remind him of his word, his word is what dictates what will be and what will not be. You remember back in Genesis chapter 1, and God said, let there be light. It, God's word dictated that it was light. John chapter 1 and verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Hallelujah. The Word is alive according to Hebrews. It's active. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It says in the King James, it's piercing the dividing asunder of our spirit soul. But it has enough power and, and life to go into our very inner beings and remove a dead man out and put a man that's alive unto God. Hallelujah. So it's up to us to fight the good fight of faith with the word of God and, and receive our promised blessing that God has promised to us. So often, as we said just a few moments ago, we just roll over and play dead. Well, guess God didn't mean for me to have it. No, God gave it to you. Somebody's stealing it. Well, I guess they, they need it more than I do. Devil don't need your stuff. You need your stuff. Somebody come into your house, start stealing your stuff. You know, what are you going to? Well, I guess you need it. Go ahead and why don't you call a few of your friends? I don't need it. Just come get it all that way. You don't have to come back. No, somebody come into my house, start stealing my stuff. It's going to be a hot time in the kettle. I'll tell you that. Why? Because I'm fighting for what's mine. I'm fighting for what's mine. And the Word of God gives us the ability and the authority to fight for what's ours. And when it comes to natural things, many times people will stand up and fight for what belongs to them. And then when it comes over to the spiritual things and receiving healings or the blessings and the benefits of God that belong to many believers, they don't even want to stand their ground. With the word of God. Why? Because they don't know it. They don't know that it's theirs. They don't know that the devil is coming to steal from them. They're just going to give it away. That's exactly what the devil wants. He wants to keep you blinded to the very essence is that you have authority and power in the kingdom of God. That you're a king and a priest in the kingdom of God. Know who you are, and if you know who you are, then you can fight the good fight, and you can win. If you don't know who you are in Christ, then you're going to go through life just hoping that God will do something for you, and, and, and then you'll take whatever tidbit or niblet that he gives you and go, ooh, hallelujah. And then anything that goes wrong, you say, oh, it must not be God's plan or purpose when the Word of God dictates exactly what his plan and purpose is. Got a little excited there. When the word of God dictates, it dictates plan and purpose. Hallelujah. Know his word. Know who you are in Christ. Know your ability. And then stand and declare what will be and what will not be. 
in your life. And quit letting the devil run shod over you. Quit letting him destroy your life. Quit letting him just take you any which way that the wind blows. Woo! Must be God. It's not God. And quit blaming him. God loves you. God cares for you. God's provided for you. And then you just let somebody come in and take it. Shame on you. Ignorance is one thing of the Word of God, but to know the Word and not stand and fight for what's yours, well, I don't dare say it. But you've got to rise up. You've got to quit being tossed to and fro like little babies. You've got to grow up. Find out who you are and then walk in that authority. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This leads me to my next point that, uh, I mean, I know people that really think that they're being humble by saying, well, you know what? Let the will of God be done. Let the will of, you know, what's going on must be the will of God. No, I can tell you it's not the word of the will of God. I can tell you it's, it's Satan that's meddling and his will is being done. Why? Because it's coming to destroy, to kill it's coming to rob. Man, if you just line it up under those three pretenses, is it blessing you? No, but it must be God. No, God blesses us. Is it robbing from you? Yeah, it must be God. No, God doesn't. He's not a thief. He's not a robber. He's not a killer. He's not a murderer. These are all characteristics of Satan. But yet you stand there blaming God. Well, you're not blaming him. You're giving him glory. God did this. He took my baby. He took my child. Hey, God just knew what he's doing. God didn't do all these things. And quit blaming him. And quit trying to give him credit for something that he didn't do. Well, God knew that they needed another little angel in heaven. That's not what the word of God says. The Word of God says that He's promised us with long life will I satisfy Him and show Him my salvation. Do bad things happen to good people? Yes. But don't blame God. And don't try to give God credit for something Satan has done. And you see, man, I'm, I got a little excited there, but, you know, it just kind of grinds me when I see people blaming God or trying to give God credit for something that is out of his nature, out of his character. That's not him. How, how would you like people going around calling you a liar? And it's not in your character. How would you like people going around calling you a murderer? And you, you, you don't kill people. How would you like going around and having people call you a thief? And you ain't a robber. But yet, we don't mind doing that to God. No. God loves us. He cares for us. And because he loves us, he provides for us. The Bible says he provides for us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, not death and destruction. So when we come into prayer, we have to know, we have to know what his word says. We have to know that it, what he's promised us. And then there are times that we have to fight the good fight of faith. And that means that we as believers must must uh, appropriate to receive. We have to appropriate to receive the promised blessings, which is, which is our rightful inheritance. We have to fight the good fight of faith. And we, I got to say a little bit of that. We have to fight to appropriate. You know, I, one thing I remember about my mother. Now, I, I, I'll tell you honestly, I know this is going to shock some of you, but it's still the truth. Myself and my siblings, we weren't perfect children. I know you think, hallelujah, Pastor Mike, he, he must have been a perfect child. Yeah, in my own eyes. But I can always remember, man, when we would get in trouble in the neighborhood, and we'd get trouble in the neighborhood. And we'd run home and tell our mama. Now, we weren't exactly truthful with our mama. She got our side of the story, but that's all it took. Because when she came out, she came out swinging on our side. Then we found out, uh, then, well, found out she was wrong and because we, we kind of fibbed to her. 
But she always had our back. And she always protected us when it come to things like that. Her character was to rise up in self-defense of her children. How much more than God? How much more so with God? My mother's first instinct was to fight to appro appropriate and receive what was right for her children. We have to fight to appropriate and receive our promised blessing, which is our rightful inheritance in Christ. We have to fight the good fight of faith. And that is speaking the word out of our mouth that, that, that we believe in what we believe in our heart and in our spirit. We have to declare with our mouth that what we believe already on the inside of us. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the, will, by the word of God. And faith begins where the will of God is made known. And the will of God is made known in the word of God. That's why it's important to hide the word of God in our heart and be ready to use scriptures against demons when they try to attack us and try to make us doubt God's word. And you folks, that's going to be the greatest fight is because as you begin to declare the word of God, as you're beginning to speak the word of God, as you're beginning to, to come forth and, 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 and know who you are in Christ, thoughts are going to come. Well, that's not going to work. That scripture ain't what it says. You can't believe that. I've heard it all. But I will tell you that the word of God will satisfy the enemy and put him under. He may not like it, but there's authority in the name of Jesus. There's authority in the word of God. There's authority when you speak the word of God out of your mouth. Demons of hell, listen. So be ready to say to Satan, just as Jesus did, just as we learned last week. For the scriptures say it is written. And then quote God's word, which is God's will about the situation. Let me say that again. As the enemy begins to attack, and you know, he attacks your mind. I mean, these thoughts come. And what begins to happen is we begin to think on them. We begin to ponder them. We begin to meditate on them. As we begin to meditate on them, we begin to act on them. We begin to, you know, the word meditate means basically to study and, 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 uh, and to, 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 to meditate, to, to study, and then to, um, to act on it. To gain knowledge, to study, to act. And as we begin to do that, you see, we become, we become um, uh, dangerous to the devil because he can't lie to us in our mind anymore. As these thoughts come that are contrary to the word of God, the word of God rises on the inside of us and says, no, that's contrary. And then our mouth says, no, it's written, it's written. But then again, there are many who will side with the devil. And believe his lie over God's word. I mean, to be honest with you, I've been one of those people myself. See, when thoughts come before, you have to, you have to gain the skill. And it is a skill over a process of time to recognize that not every thought that's coming into your brain is of God and is of you. And that every thought that's contrary to the word of God has to be cast down according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 or chapter 10. It has to be cast down. has to be brought captive. Why? Because if you think on it long enough, you meditate on it long enough, you're going to act on it. It'll become truth. And yet the word of God is truth. So when we go to God in prayer, we have to speak the truth. We have to know with certainty what God's word says about the situation we're praying. And so, let me say this as well in context with that. Not only are you dealing sometimes with your own mind, but there are also people who in the natural will unconsciously side with the devil to try to discourage you in spiritual things in your faith. 
try to discourage you that what, what you're believing or what you're speaking is not real. Now, there's a difference between goofy and what is real. The Word is real. And if you take time to find out what the Word of God says, you will stay out of goofiness. Hopefully. So, when the enemy comes, whether through people or in your mind, stand your ground on God's Word. And if the enemy attacks you, spirit, soul, or body, man, you're prepared. You have the Word. You have the Word of God, which is alive. You have the sword of the Spirit. Man, there's... there's <laughs> you got all heaven backing that word. The one who framed the world with his words is the one who's backing his word. There was a, I read a story about a minister who was holding services here in Texas uh, when there was, when there was the first outbreak or pandemic of influenza. And I don't know, uh, history, I think, around, you know, 1918, somewhere, 1970, 1918. I'm not quite sure of the date, but it says that uh, uh, there were many people that were ill at that point in time. And, you know, just like today, they had to close schools. They had to shut things down. And this particular minister was later read in the paper that more people in Dallas County had died from this ep epidemic than the dangerous influenza epidemic that broke out in the uh, year following. So I got my story messed up. So this particular epidemic was happening in 1960. See, I got it in my notes. I actually wrote it. And so, but this, this epidemic of influenza, that bro it was um, more people in Dallas County had died from this in 1960 than, than the one that happened uh, pre-World War I um, that had, bro that had broken out. So this particular influence epidemic in Texas effective, affected this man's meetings terribly. He said some people became ill and during this time never did get back to the meetings. And the symptoms of this particular epidemic of influenza was, was extremely severe. And every one of those symptoms, he said, came upon his body one night. Every one of those symptoms came upon his body one night, but he never told a single person. He just kept saying to himself, it is written, it is written, it is written, it is written. And as he stood his ground in faith on the word of God and refused to accept the influenza because it wasn't God's will, he said, that as he did that, he was able to continue with his meetings. And he stated, he, like he stated, he was in revival. And this particular meeting, sinners were being saved. People were being filled with the Holy Ghost. And he knew that it wasn't God's will to close that down. But people sometimes, sometimes have the stupidest ideas about these things and they say for example that you know it's the will of God for people to be sick it's the will of God for people to be sick it was the will of God for him to contact this it was the will of God for these meetings to be shut down no it contradicts the Word of God and if that were true that it was God's will for people to be sick then you know why have many chur churches then build hospitals to try to get people well I mean, it's, if we're all supposed to be sick and that's God's will, why, why are we building hospitals? Why are we supporting hospitals to, to help people get well? Why are we doing this? Because if we do this, it, it, you know, it would get people out of the will of God. I firmly believe that doctors are fighting sickness and disease too, but they're fighting with different weapons. And... If it were God's will for people to be sick, then it, would be, then it would not be God's will for people to go to doctors because doctors are fighting sickness and disease too. Can you see the... I mean, if, if God's will is for all of us to be sick and that's His will, then 
man, we shouldn't be going to the doctors because they're fighting sickness and disease too. Then we have to look at this. If it's God's will for people to be sick, then why not pray for others to become sick so they can enjoy the same blessings of sickness and disease and be in God's perfect will. Coming back to the story about this minister who had, had, had contacted the symptoms of this influenza. After this minister prayed and said it is written, stood on God's word against these influenza symptoms that tried to attack his body, he got better. And he continued on with his services. He said he never did get the influenza. See, when you have the foundation of God's word under you, you can stand your ground against Satan's attacks. And that's exactly what we're talking about. Standing our ground. This is what, this is what it says here in Timothy chapter 6. Where it says, Fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. When we fight the good fight of faith, when we fight the good fight of faith, we will never, ever, ever lose the battle. Say, but you don't understand, Pastor. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I've been through. Yeah, you don't know what I've been through. You don't know the battles I've walked through. But I'll tell you what, I've gotten some great victories because I refuse to quit. I refuse to quit. I refuse to quit. So, we fight the good fight of faith. We stand our ground. We declare with our mouth the word of God. Why? Because it brings faith. It creates an atmosphere where our faith can grow. Faith is an important aspect to receiving the promises of God. Without faith, the Bible says, it's impossible to receive. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is. And that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So we come to God in prayer. We find the scriptures that we need that will ascertain with certainty the promises have been, have been given already unto us. This way we can approach the throne boldly. Boldly and with assurance. You don't have to come to God wondering and wavering. You come to God boldly and with assurance. Knowing that what He promised you is already yours because you found what you need in his word. And his word is his will. His word is his promise. His word is his bond. If he said you can have it, then you can have it. It says in Numbers that I'm a God that cannot lie. If I said it, I will do it. Hallelujah. These are the things that we, we have to base not our assumptions or opinions, but our facts on. We base our facts on the Word of God. And when we base our facts on the truth of God's Word, we cannot fail. But then it comes back to the simple point that we have to fight the good fight of faith. Sometimes you have to fight what's yours, to keep what's yours, to take what's yours. Because there's an entity out there trying to take what rightfully belongs to you, and in many people's lives, he successfully walks up and just walks away with it. With no resistance. I like, I like something I heard in a movie. And I, I mean, <clears throat> these are the facts of the case. These are the facts of the case. Hallelujah. And they're undisputed. It was a movie, uh, what was the name of that movie? Uh, Jack Nicholson and, um, yes, I'm talking out loud to myself. Only a few good m men. Kevin Bacon says, these are the facts of the case and they're undisputed. 
Well, I want you to know tonight, these are the facts of the case, and they're undisputed. The Word of God is alive, it's active, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It goes out, it does not come back void. When it's in our mouth, it is the sword of the Spirit, it is a double-edged sword. These are the facts of the case, and they're undisputed. They're undisputed that the promises of God are yes and amen. And when we go into His Word, and we find out what His Word says, the facts of the case says that we can stand upon the promises of the word and they will come to pass. Now, these are the facts of the case and they're undisputed. Paul writing to Timothy says that we have to fight the good fight. We have to fight the good fight. Hallelujah. Thank you. He didn't say, thank God he didn't say, you're going to have to fight the bad fight. It's going to be a bad fight, boy. Bad, 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 bad fight. No, it's a good fight. Why? Because we win. We win. Hallelujah. Well, I trust you got something out of tonight. Glory to God. Next week we're gonna we're gonna look at our our, our, our step number two in this series and that we must ask God for what we want. Man, don't let the devil run ramshot over you. Don't let them tell you that don't belong to you. Don't let them tell you that it's not yours. You have no right to it. Find out what God's Word says. And if you'll find out what God's Word says, then you can pray the Word. And when you pray the Word, you pray power. You pray truth. And you pray right. And God will honor His Word. God honors His Word. I know that as a fact. I've proven his word out. I, like I said, I remember the day the Lord said to me, I'm not, I'm not moved by your faith. I'm not moved by your needs. I'm moved by your faith. You may have a lot of needs right now, but that's not what's going to move God. What's going to move God is your faith. You may be in a place tonight where you need to, to, to test your faith. You need to expand your faith. You may be in a place tonight where you need to receive through faith, the gift of salvation, Jesus Christ. Maybe you've never accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Maybe you don't know that, that these promises and benefits are yours. Maybe you've never had the opportunity to fight the good fight of faith. Tonight I want to give you an opportunity to come into the fold and come into the family of God, to become part of His kingdom. These tools and, and resources that we're talking about, His Word, are for all believers. And that's the key, believers. God's Word says that if we'll confess with our mouth what we believe in our heart that Jesus was raised from the dead, that we will be born again. We will be saved. We will be made whole. What does it mean? What does it mean by that? Spirit, soul, and body. Hallelujah. That we'll go from eternal death and damnation unto eternal life. We'll be translated. We'll be moved basically from the kingdom of darkness and our, our new address will be the kingdom of God. When you accept Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior, something new and wonderful occurs at that very moment. A miracle occurs on the inside of you. What you cannot see, but you know it occurred. I remember when I accepted Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior the first time I was in California in the Bay Area. Man, I walked out the door and I, I was looking at the San Leandro Mountains. And you know, my outer man and my brain had seen these mountains. Uh, uh, man more times than I can count. So they were familiar, they were recognizable, but there was something on the inside of me that was looking out that had never seen them before. And it was strange, but it was real. I've been in church all of my life. And yet, there came a moment where I accepted Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. If you've never done that, I want to give you that opportunity right now. Become new, to come into the kingdom of God. Become a child of the living God and a believer who has the authority to use the Word of God. How do I do that? Just pray this prayer with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you, forgive me of all my sins. Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart, become Lord of my life. I confess with my mouth what I believe in my heart, that Jesus was raised from the dead. From this moment forward, I'm born again. I'm on my way to heaven. And I'm a new creation in Christ. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time, 
on your screen right now is an email address. Send me an email at info at hgc.church. Include your contact information. We have a short little small book we want to put in the mail to you that will help you understand exactly what has just occurred to you then help you get into a good Bible-believing church that you can become part of the family, develop and grow. Man, if you're in the San Antonio area, love to have you come check us out once our doors are open again, hopefully very soon. You know, I also want to just speak to those of you who have accepted Jesus, but you know you're not living right. You know you're not doing right. You know you're not filling God's purpose. I've been there, and I got angry at God one time and walked away from the ministry, walked away from Him. I went on a four-year long vacation. But you know, God loved me so much that He slowly drew me back. And maybe you, you're feeling those little tugs from, from heaven above, calling you to come back into the kingdom. And man, I didn't really know how to do it. I didn't really want to do it per se, because I knew I'd, I'd go back to church and, you know, I'd go back to the same people that I felt judged me and treated me wrong and so forth and so on. But you know what? I made that decision. How did I do that? First John 1, 9. I asked him to forgive me. And the Bible says he's faithful and just to forgive us. Went right back to the same church I left. You know, all those people that I thought would hate me, loved me and helped me develop and grow to fulfill the plan and the purpose of God. Find a place where you can grow. No church is perfect, no pastor is perfect, no people are perfect, but there's a place where you fit and grow in the family of God. Man, I want to thank you for the opportunity to come into your homes tonight and to, be, to bring the word of God. I trust you got something out of it. If you're watching after the fact and it's not live for you and you like this video uh, on YouTube, Please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'd love to have you part of the family. If you're watching on Facebook, man, like us. Again, comment on the message. We appreciate your comments. Every day we're, we put up daily inspirational things on Facebook to help encourage you and just kind of keep you uplifted in a time of uncertainty. We know that God has a great plan for your life. So, man, with that said, hallelujah, um, join me again right back here Sunday morning, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, Facebook Live, or YouTube, YouTube.com, His Grace Church on our YouTube channel. And then we'll be back here 7 p.m. next Thursday night for Amplify. We're turning up the heat every Thursday night with practical teaching for everyday living. God bless you. Have a great rest of your evening.